Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Kortomich, and today I'm going to be doing uh, my second essay style thing on here. Uh, and this was this one's going to be based upon reading fantasy from a role playing game perspective. Um, so, you know, I want to talk about my favorite hobby besides reading fantasy role playing games, and I'm going to delve into how being a lifelong gamer has informed or molded or warped <laughs> uh, my view into how I perceive epic fantasy literature when I read it. Um, so when I first started reading fantasy literature for fun, I had already been gaming for several years on and off, you know, casually through my teens. Um, and then I joined a service, the US Air Force, and out of boredom, um, the uh, gaming took a more serious turn. And it became quite the intense hobby. I suppose you could say that uh, reading all the game rules and supplements may count as reading fantasy literature, but that was really just research for the games I was playing and didn't involve narrative structure and that hook of being immersed in somebody else's world. Um, so then one day I found myself in a bookstore, you know, searching out the uh, latest release of Dungeons & Dragons, and I noticed an ad uh, for a novel called Dragonlance. So I checked it out, and uh, I was like, wow, somebody wrote a novel based upon my hobby here. I had to try it. I was hooked. Uh, I haven't stopped reading since. <laughs> and uh, so I spent most of my time and money back then reading just about every single novel that TSR... Um, and then Wizards of the Coast put out, and they, they were the publishers of uh, all D&D &D material and, and uh, novels. And um, so, as you can tell, um, I'm a dungeon master. If, if you can't tell by my shirt here, this is my, like, uniform. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got the D&D the &D, uh, logo there, and I got my name going down here. So, um, and uh, so... That was uh, what I did for a very long time. Uh, I went to college, and my reading life became more informed and grew as I as I went through and completed my degree. And because um, I was it was on English and history, so that was uh, a lot of reading. And um, so I kind of grew out of the D and D novel trope, so to speak. And I expanded my literary journey into history and philosophy, and um, other other types of literary uh reading uh but i never ever stopped playing dungeons and dragons um so you know some amazing things happened uh you know i uh i'm the guy who's driving the games most of the time i i play as a player every once in a while but a lot of the times i'm putting the uh the, the story and putting the players through the action and so, you know, I, I run a lot of the pre-made adventures bought from the store. But occasionally, I would make up my own stuff to run the players through. Um, so in order to help me along, I started taking plot lines and or character ideas from some of the novels that I read. I stole cultural ideas from Robert Adams' Horse Clans novels. Um... You know, in those books, there were these rare mutated humans called the Undying Ones who were very hard to kill. They regenerate and can only be killed by, like, drowning in fire or losing their heads or some other nefarious means like that. Um, and these, these books were published prior to, like, the Highlander movies and Wolverine and all that stuff. Uh, so I introduced this concept into my game to throw some spice into the human race. And um, I also stole the whole nomadic culture introduced into those novels and created a similar society in my made-up world. And so it was really fun, you know, to do that and um, incorporate these ideas. And that's what I think role-playing is for. It's to, it's to incorporate your, the ideas you get from fantasy literature or any literature, really. And um, any medium and, you know, put those ideas to use and uh it's it's a really fun vehicle for you know creative energy and getting it out there um i i also stole some story ideas from stephen donaldson's chronicles of thomas covenant 
Uh, there were several big events and characters introduced in those novels that I adapted to fit the players' characters and what they were trying to achieve. And that was a lot of fun because, uh, you know, I uh, really liked uh, those novels a lot. And it was neat taking stuff out of there and seeing how the players reacted to those things um, in, a, in a game setting. Uh, I even stole the idea of the ultimate predator from the predator movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and, uh, created full monster stats and made it a high level threat. And, uh, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and that's, you know, that's science fiction. So I even drew on, on, uh, movie media and, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever came to mind. Um, I mean, basically the, the point is, Everything I read gets translated into a "what if" in-game D and D moment. Um, you know, then I read Malism, <laughs> and uh, this was this high-concept, high literary, complex fantasy series um, that was initially born out of the minds of two guys who were doing a role-playing game, and. Um, that blew my mind, you know, I was like, wow, this is really right up my alley. Every single chapter in this epic led me to thinking, how can I turn this into something cool in my game? And, uh, wait, no, like, like, never mind my game. Where is the RPG for this world? You know? And, uh, I had heard that a little while ago that Erickson and Esselmont were working on a, like a source book or a guidebook for the world of Mellows. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that someday that'll be true. Um, nothing else like that yet. But I stare at those maps and imagine possibilities like a teenager dreaming about their favorite celebrity on a poster on a wall. I, you know, I love the, uh, I love all the, the possibility there. So I, so I uh, went ahead and started a campaign uh, last year that I am basing heavily upon the events in Dead House Gates. Uh, the setting is different. Tundra instead of Desert, for instance. I got a Dwarven Empire instead of the uh, Malazan Empire. And, of course, the ever-present possibility that my players will do something I don't expect. I uh, definitely stole the plot and borrowed some characters. So, shh, don't tell my players. And I hope to use more. Um, you know... I know that that'll never have the same dramatic impact as the uh, words on the page have had on me. I can only hope my players will enjoy what I try to do. Um, so other books I've read recently or currently that I can easily picture as a uh, D&D campaign. Um, that would be uh, Curse of the Mist Wraith by Janie Wirtz. Um, she has a well-realized, highly interactive world with magic galore there's bards there's sorcerers there's uh probably assassins and there's uh you know plenty of fighters and rogues and what have you um i recently read the great god's war by stephen donaldson um that was a uh more like a elemental elemental magic type of setting um a bit more of a limited world but still very uh very compatible for a uh, D and D type setting. Um, I recently read *The Severing Sun*. Uh, that would be more like a low magic world uh, with uh, like Amazons and tribal warriors and stuff. And uh, you know, you, you can have those kind of settings in uh, in uh, D and D or any any other um, role playing game system. It doesn't have to be D and D. Um, uh, I'm reading *A Touch of Light* by Chiago. Abdallah. Um, and uh, that has like some dark magics and like blood magic almost and uh, some uh, uh, like wicked priests. <laughs> and then I'm also reading um, The Way of Adan by Philip Chase. Uh, that's a magic infused world that has, you know, dwarves kind of and elves kind of um, and some more wicked priests. Hmm about that uh so that's all stuff that that i look at those maps and those those books and i uh i go yeah 
that could be adapted. That could be something could be done with that. Um, there's also been some uh, older series that actually have some official role-playing game supplements. You got the Wheel of Time RPG. Uh, my friends and I played that a while ago, a long time ago, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, there's the Conan role-playing game. We've also played that one. Also a lot of fun. And so, obviously, uh, RPGs have had an immense impact on the fantasy genre. And um, this goes full circle as what spawned the success of RPGs and fantasy literature to begin with. Uh, a quite excellent symbiotic relationship. So that's it for today. I uh, hope you like this video. Like and subscribe if you do. And be good to each other. Thank you.